So um, I'm Gabriela Blakey. I'm the Chief Operations Officer for um, Albuquerque Public Schools. And um, we are getting ready to open up schools on Wednesday for the first day of school for in-person learning, which we're really excited about. We have looked at the new toolkit from the Public Education Department and made adjustments um, to the toolkit. As far as um, the buildings, they're extremely safe. We've put in a lot of um, different um, health and safety protocols into our buildings over the past year and getting ready for this year. Um, very little as far as the um, building process has been changed from the toolkit that the Public Education Department released last year until this year. Um, most of the guidelines are the same. Um, we have adjusted things such as um, water fountain usage, uh, contact tracing is a little bit different, and um, universal mask wearing. And so we're um, getting ready to just welcome our kids back on Wednesday, hopefully um, as many students come back for in-person learning and are ready to go. Are there any questions? <laughs> you're, you're a good group to say no. no like in a classroom, nobody asks any questions. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, you mentioned the contract tracing process is going to be a little different. So how is it going to be different from last year? So um, the real like, purpose of this year is to maintain in-person learning as much as possible. We know over the course of the pandemic that it really has impacted our students and we want to main maintain as much in-person learning as possible. So last spring, um, students were quarantined, like a whole class would be quarantined if a student was positive. Um, in this set case, if a student is double vaccinated or if a student was wearing a mask within six feet of the students, um, they are not quarantined. So the ability to keep in-person learning continuous over um, having cases is really going to be much better this year. Um, and we'll be able to keep kids in the classroom even as children get sick. How's the district uh, doing on upgrading all the air filtration systems and have all school buildings been upgraded? Or are there some buildings that still need to be addressed? So we didn't really actually have to upgrade most of our facilities um, in the sense of just make sure that they're um, prepared and ready such as pulling the dampers out of um, our units we've also installed a lot of um, windows that have been able to be open that weren't able to be open before and we've also installed uh, UVC units in several of our classrooms to help with um, additional mitigation of virus in the classroom and we'll take you to see some of those So transportation is still one of our utmost concerns, um, being able to bring back enough drivers. We are short um, several drivers, mostly from our contractors. And um, we're adapting uh, schedules as we speak to see how many routes we can get going to make sure that we can transport as many students as possible. There will actually be a change to um, the certain mileage that we um, transport students and things like that, but our ability to be efficient is definitely impacted by the loss of so many drivers. Are we still trying to hire more drivers? We are. Um, we're still looking at drivers. Um, APS itself in our transportation department, we have, I think, five um, bus driver openings, but our contractors are down about 40 drivers, and so it's really within our contractors for bus drivers that we need additional drivers. We don't have a mandate for um, COVID-19 um, vaccinations. We do have mandated vaccinations that we've had, you know, polio, those kinds of vaccines that are still required of our students. Um, we don't have a mandate of vaccines for our students and staff. Our staff that are not vaccinated do have to participate in surveillance testing. Um, and then we're using universal masks as a coverage for everybody despite vaccination status. Will the school nurses have the ability to test and provide vaccines for uh, any of the students? 
We have our school-based health centers in our schools are able to provide vaccines for students, and then we have had several um, vaccinations for students, um, including one we just had Friday at this at this school, um, to continue to offer vaccines for our students. What about COVID testing? And COVID testing, we do not offer at the school site. They would have to go to one of the central locations provided by the city. What's been one of the biggest challenges within the district to prepare for this school year? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is just getting back to in-person learning in general and making sure that we put in as many um, precautions and um, safety protocols as possible to keep our staff and students in a healthy environment to have in-person learning. So I think just the um, factor of making sure that we're able to provide that sense of security because we know how important in-person learning is to our students and how much they need it. We just really want to um, do whatever it takes to be able to get our kids back in the classrooms. Yes. You mentioned that there's different health and safety protocols um, this year as opposed to last year. What are some of those and how will that optimize the safety of students in ATS? Um, most of the protocols are the same other than like contact tracing, um, which I talked about a little bit. Um, some of what we've learned about the virus over the course of the pandemic, it's more airborne than it is on surfaces. So although we're keeping up with some of our high touch cleaning, the air quality is more important, which is why we've decided about the masks. Um, it's the airborne is much more important to keep in touch than when we were first in the pandemic and we were worried about like touching a piece of paper or providing food and things like that. Um, so now we're much more aware, I guess, of the progression of the virus and looking at how we can mitigate it the most with any sort of airborne particles. And then a follow-up question. Um, I know some school districts have been having trouble finding the filters for their filtration system. Is that a problem here at <coughs> ATS? No, we don't. Um, sorry, <laughs> I looked at our maintenance and <laughs> operations director. Um, we haven't had a problem as we did at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, if, if you remember like those MERV 13 filters and um, right now we're in pretty good shape to be able to keep our routine maintenance of all of our um, supplies. And uh, because we weren't in school, I mean, we have like a million masks. We have gallons and gallons, thousands of gallons of hand sanitizer and cleaners and um, so we're really well prepared, whereas this time last year, we were really concerned that we would run out of supply. Um, but we are very well prepared for um, being able to keep our classrooms safe. And with the mask mandate, what is the time frame of when students have to have their masks on to when they're allowed to take them So students have to have their masks on when they're in the building um, and when they're not eating. So if a student is eating, obviously they take their mask off. So if they're in the cafeteria, for example, they would take their mask off to eat. And outdoors, uh, masks are not required. And does that, indoors, does that include buses? Yes, on the bus, um, ma masks are required on the bus. Uh, you mentioned installing more windows at some schools. What are some of those schools? Uh, I can get you a list of them, but um, we also have on our um, website, we have a school readiness dashboard. And so when you log on to that site, you can upload and see like the filters that are in every school. You can see which windows have been replaced and you can see which schools um, have the UVC filters installed. And that's a public dashboard that's available for any parent, staff, or anybody that wants to see the readiness of our facilities. And what's that website again? What's that? What's that website? It's APS.edu, and then you click on School Readiness Survey. Cool. Kids have to be masked for indoor sports and not outdoor sports, is that right? Yes, yeah. Anything inside is what students have to be masked on. Now, for athletics, if a student is vaccinated, they do not have to wear a mask. Even indoors? Even indoors. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. And how do you determine who's vaccinated? They show proof to the coach. Oh, they do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the athletic guidelines are a little bit different because we follow NMAA for athletics, and then um, the in-person learning time is when we follow the uh, PED and the district protocols. And is your attendance up this year or now? We'll find out okay. on Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know yet. Okay. So, 
Correct. So any student who wants to stay online um, for various reasons, it was a school we had prior to the pandemic as well, E-Academy. Um, we have E-Academy 9 through 12 and we have an E-Academy K through 8. So online school is definitely an option that we have available for any of our students that we had, you know, prior to the pandemic too. Online learning has been something that has worked really well for some students and then some students um, because of the pandemic have taken advantage of that school as well. I don't, we could get that information for you. Yeah. That'll be for the, the first Probably a couple uh, weeks. Right, we, we started the 20 schools last year to the early ELTP, the early learning time program. And we had between five and 6,000 kids start last week. Um, we, it'll be fluid all the way through. Some school attendance is way up, some is flat, but we're not gonna have those numbers for at least a couple of weeks at each school. Gabrielle, can you touch a little bit on food services? So we have um, our food services will be back. I mean, we've been serving students through the whole and families through the pandemic. We do have a waiver from um, the federal department to not have to um, qualify for income for free meals. So at this point, free meals are available to all of our students despite any income level. Um, and then we have available grab and go uh, for family packs for any of our students who are at E Academy and they can pick those up weekly at our food services um, location uh, for any family who's online. And then breakfast and lunch will be provided back into our schools. And students are really excited. They'll have hot meals again. You know, we don't have to do the grab and goes. And so um, we'll be able to really enhance the, the food for our children. And we'll um, publicly track COVID cases again? Yes, so we track all of our COVID cases. Um, we put, post that on our website weekly. Uh, for both staff and students and then um, we kind of it's our data has always been interesting throughout the course of the pandemic We've always tracked it and it always follows the curve of the city as well So as we see cases go up in the city We always kind of see our little APS curve kind of mimic what we see in the city as well with both staff and students Um, not necessarily. We have our regular construction projects, you know, that have been going on as far as school security. Um, we've been able to really increase actually our ability to complete a lot of our construction projects, especially in regards to our security vestibules. Um, during the pandemic, we were able to actually accomplish a lot um, in construction. Yes. Uh, should things get worse, at what point would students need to return back home and go to virtual learning? Is there a plan in place for that? We're hoping that we don't have to do that, which is why we're putting in um, all of these factors, because we really, really want to stress in-person learning this year for our students. Uh, we follow the Department of Health and the Public Education Department, so if there does come a time where, you know, the Department of Health or the Public Education Department deems that it's necessary for schools to go back online, um, we would do so. But I think through the course of the pandemic, we've seen that that's really kind of the last option. There's a lot of other mitigation that we would do first before that would really be considered at this point. If it did test positive for COVID, then I, I, I'd imagine that every kid who shall have to quarantine for a couple of weeks, and then what happens to his lesson plan? Because you're not offering it online. Correct. So if a student is um, quarantined for being positive, it's a 10 day quarantine from the day the symptoms started. Um, typically, we saw last year that would equate to usually about five to seven days of classroom instruction that it would be affected if you take into account the weekends and when they actually were tested. Um, so it would be similar to how teachers um, work with students when they're homesick for the flu or, you know, chicken pox, any of the other things. Um, so they would provide, you know, homework to the students to make up their work while they were out sick. Right. The kids who have been exposed but not tested positive, they, they still come to school, but they're, they're, um, they have to wear their masks and all those other things. Right, that's been the biggest change to the protocols is if a student is exposed, last year the whole class had to be quarantined and would go online. Um, this year it is different where you'd have to be, you know, within close proximity and without a mask to be considered uh, exposed. 
And so most of our students, in, because of all the mitigation things that we're putting in place, won't be exposed unless they start to see symptoms and then they would have to um, you know, stay home if they have any symptoms. We still do have screening for our staff and our families before they come to school and before they come to work to make sure they don't have any unique symptoms um, other than you know, allergies. The smoke, of course, now is kind of throwing everybody off. Um, and a fever, so we still have families screen um, before they come to school to prohibit, you know, like any sort of uh, transmission that if a student is feeling sick, they should stay home. Is that done daily? They screen daily, yeah. Also? And the students and staff screen daily. Mm -hmm. But not tests. Not tests, just self-screening for symptoms. Like if they have, you know, a sore throat, fever, then we need um, people to stay home, both staff and students. Thank you. Yes, I think we're really ready. I think our staff are really anxious and excited. Um, this time of year as educators is always exciting in August, you know, so I think it brings back um, a time where we've learned to adapt a little bit to the different um, ways of like our kind of trial run that we had in the spring. And I think um, our, our staff is really excited to, it's a very different feeling from, than it was in April. Um, our staff is very excited to bring kids back on campus. Sure. Do you want to say anything about just reminding people that we are still in the middle of the pandemic, so this isn't cool as we, this is still lots of things that are going to feel different. Sure, yeah, so we are still in the <laughs> middle of a pandemic, and with the Delta variant, you know, unfortunately, we start, started to see things come forward. So, I mean, a lot of the cooperative learning that we see is a little bit different, you know, because we still do want to keep kids a little bit spaced apart. Um, from each other, so that's going to be different. Um, a lot of our classrooms are kind of in rows now, and before we were putting them in pods. So we have to adapt to those kinds of things because we want to make sure that we can keep in-person learning, and if it means that we have to set up our classrooms a little different than how we have in the past, um, and that we do have to you know, have the masks on while we're in class, um, it just is going to help everybody stay safer and keep in-person learning. Did you have a, another? Yeah, I'm sure we're going to see in a moment here, but what, what is the change to the drinking fountain? There's not, uh, so the change is that they were off. The change that it's open. The change is that they're open. Got it. Okay. But we have installed uh, touchless water bottle filler stations around our, sc every school in the district has um, touchless water bottle fillers, so they can use that. But now our um, water fountains are open. Um, in the spring, we had to close them. We also had to close um, like the bathroom stalls. You could use every other one. Those are open again too. Um, and so some of those like things have changed, um, but it's just that they're open. Yeah. 